beautiful AP Calc students. We are going to be working on 5.3, which is inverse functions. And we're going to start off with the definition of what inverse functions are. So here is the definition of inverse functions. Make sure to get this down for me, please. A function g is the inverse function of the function f to say that the function g is uh, denoted by that symbol for f inverse. And that is your definition of an inverse function. Basically, you shove an x into the function g, get that answer, shove it back into the function f, and it brings you right back to the original thing you were working with. So this is saying that the function f undoes whatever g just did. And likewise, the function g will undo whatever f does. So I don't care what your input is. It could be a 2 or a 3 or a negative 4 8, 4 fifths. So I don't know, 4 eighths would be a half, right? But whatever the input is, if it goes through each of the two functions, it comes out the same thing it started. Got it? Okay. So the function g is denoted as f inverse. All righty. Here's theorem 5.6. And theorem 5.6 is called the reflective property of inverse functions.
contains the point A comma B if and only if the graph of F inverse contains the point B comma A. sense to you. I'm going to draw a little picture for you. It's not in my notes, so I'm just kind of doing this off the top of my head here. Here's a function. We're going to call it f. And f contains the point a, b. So where can I put something? Where's the a go? In the first one. In the first one, right? What's, what's over here, by the way? What's this whole set called? Domain. This is the domain of f, yeah. and they are the x's, right? These are the x values that are in the domain of f, you said x's, so that's good. Okay, and a is going to be paired with what? B. B. And what are these things called? Ranges. 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 Okay, together, collectively, it is the range. Okay, they're range elements. So this is range of f, and like you said a minute ago, they're the y values. Right? Okay, well, what's f inverse look like? So it's another arrow back or well, other way. An arrow back the other way, mm -hmm. and this is F inverse, right? Yeah. So does it make sense that if B is in the range of F, mm -hmm. that this B has to also be in the range. domain of of F inverse? Mm -hmm. And when it gets sent over, it's being mm -hmm. sent this way, right? And it goes to A, which is now in the range, range of the range of F inverse. Okay. And it's okay to say G, but we're not saying G right here in this particular one. Okay. Okay? So on this top arrow, the one going from A to B, I would like to say that F of A is equal to B. And what do you think I want to say on the bottom arrow going the other direction? F of B is equal to A. Say it again to me. F inverse of B is equal to A. So mapping wise, it makes good sense, I hope. And just stating it, I hope it makes good sense too. Now we've done a lot of this last year where if we wanted, we had a graph of F and we wanted to find F inverse, all we had to do is take our XY points and switch them, okay, and become yx points, which are still xy points, but the range becomes the domain, the domain becomes the range, and so on. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and erase over here where it talked about uh, definition of inverse functions. And I suppose I'll keep the 5-3 label up there for a minute. Alrighty. So, um, I'm going to give an example problem for this, okay? f of x equals 2x minus 3. Nice, easy, what kind of function? Binomial. Mm, I suppose it's binomial. Give me a better word that describes the type of function that is. Linear. Linear. Good word. Better, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So f of x equals 2x minus 3. It's a linear function. Can we graph it? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Okay. I suppose I could... Uh, I could do this little thingy here. Let's see, let's let the world discover what's going on. Oh, I'm stuck. I wonder why I'm stuck. But I'm gonna have to make use of what I got. mx plus b format, and the m is the slope, slope and the b is the y-axis. 
y-intercept. So 0, negative 3 is my y-intercept anyway. Come over here, plot it, 0, negative 3. Always label when you put your dot down. Okay, at least for the first few points you play. They're just up to over 1. Up to over where? To the right 1. Up to right 1. Up to right 1. What's the name of that point? Uh, 1, one, one. And then I'm going to go up to right 1 again. What's that point? 2, 1. Up to right 1. What's the name of that point? As soon as you lose. Up to right 1 again. That is 4, 5. Now I can keep going up to right 1, up to right 1, up to oh. right 1, or I could go down to left one, down to left one, down to left one. I'm only going to do that once. Name that point. Um, negative, one, negative, one, negative, one, negative one, negative five. Negative one, negative five is good. All right, so connect your dots nice and neat. Go to the edge of wherever you are uh, graphing. Okay, and even though you don't have points plotted, follow the slope as you keep going, okay? So this is my f of x equals 2x minus 3. Linear, what's the slope? 2. 2, very good. Guess what I'm going to do over here in this space? Inverse. I'm going to calculate the inverse function. How many steps? Four. Four steps. First step? Change f of x to y. Change f of x to y. That was a big step, OK? Step two? Interchange the x and y. Interchange the x and y. Third step? Solve for y. for my what? Y-intercept. Three halves is one and a half. Keep going. Um, oh, one, two. One, two? How would you get that? Because uh, if you plug in one, you half plus three halves is... Okay, so you, you actually plug the one in. Okay, so one half times one is just a half, plus three halves makes... Four halves, which is two. Yeah. So one comma two. So one comma two. Something else. Come on, come on. Three comma three. Three comma three. One. Negative one one. Yeah. Are you actually plugging the points in? Good. Three, three. Good job. I already got that one. Give me another one. Don't let this bite you. Negative three, zero. <laughs> what is it? Negative three, zero. Negative three, zero. One, two, three. Negative three, zero. Negative five, negative one. Negative five, negative one. What are you doing now? Switching A and B. You're switching, right? What'd you say? Five, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Can I draw the line now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I like the idea that eventually we got to the, to the thought process of taking the points that were on F and interchanging them. That's what that theorem says we can do. Okay? So I'm going to start here. is f inverse of x, which is 1 half x plus 3 halves. Good. Last tidbit before I move on. We're going to 
going to see this on another example, but for right now, I want to point it out. We have f of x is equal to 2x minus 3, and we have f inverse of x is 1 half x plus 3 halves. What is this slope? What is this slope? What do you notice about these two slopes? They are reciprocal. Okay. I suppose over here I could say inverse functions have reciprocal slopes. How's that for a nice sentence? All kind of up and down and wavy and all over the place. Inverse functions have reciprocal slopes. <clears throat> I need you to get the fact that if one function is increasing, I'll use this one because this is my original function. If this function is increasing, then its inverse function is increasing. Additionally, if this function is increasing, then its inverse function, which would be the original function, is also increasing. increasing. Slopes are reciprocals of each other. They are not negative reciprocals of each other. Clear? Mm -hmm. Negative reciprocals of each other come into play when you're dealing with perpendicular lines, not inverse functions. If one function is increasing, then its inverse is increasing. If one function is decreasing, and so forth. OK. All right. Not very much so forth. Just one more thing. So that's it for right now, OK? Talent out.